<laughs> See myself. This is quite an adventure for a country welding boy that just loves to burn stuff up. <laughs> it's an honor to be here tonight. I'd like first of all to thank God for his faithfulness in my life. Without him, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd like to thank Commissioner Dozer, the foundation, the state and local directors. I want you to know that everything you do is felt in the trenches with the instructors. Your support helps us do what we got to do to build better citizens out there to take over the trades. Now, I'm going to try to do this without tearing up. Well, let me say that again. Welders don't cry. <laughs> I'm going to try to do this without faulty leakage from my eyes. Um, I asked for something from Deanna. Normally she doesn't say no to me, but she did on this. She said, nope, I got to cry and wall her up here, so I'm going to do it. I love metal. I love cutting metal, joining metal, burning metal. But welding came as a surprise to me. I'm a U.S. Army veteran with 21 years active duty service. I started my Army career as an airborne infantryman in the 82nd Airborne. After my first enlistment, I changed my military occupational skill to diesel mechanic. As a soldier, we were taught to never quit. One day, we had a vehicle down, no part to repair it. I had never welded before, but I grabbed a welder, I welded the part together, and I repaired the vehicle. That torch had sparked a new passion. When I retired from the military, I went straight to Wiregrass Technical College to receive my formal welding training. I entered the welding field, I worked for myself, and I provided a pretty good income welding on farm equipment. But something was missing, a lack of service. I'm a guy who serves. So when I was provided the opportunity to serve once again as a civilian on the battlefield in Afghanistan, I jumped at the chance. At first, I was assigned to Bagram, a relatively quiet and safe post. But later, I was transferred to the Wardock province, where we received mortars, rockets, and small arms fire each and every day. <laughs> I decided it was time to retire again. <laughs> Once home, I took some much needed R&R &R and I went to Colorado to see my grandson for the first time. During this visit, I was cooking chicken wings and the propane tank exploded. I spent all them years on the battlefield without a single injury to be taken out by a barbecue grill and chicken wings. <laughs> I received third and fourth degree burns over 40% of my body. I spent three months in the burn ward with 43 surgeries. I spent two years of recovery, cosmetic surgery and physical therapy, and a bunch of time in a lazy boy. Against the odds, I returned to welding. Later, I received a call from Wiregrass Technical College with the opportunity to interview for the position of welding instructor. <laughs> I thought, me? No way. Uh-uh. That ain't me. I said, nope, not going to do it. Thankfully, Wiregrass did not give up. I had no idea what I was getting into. I was handed an empty classroom, 12 students. Day one, I sat on the floor with a contractor's crayon and a military mindset and took one task at a time. I was able to convey my passion each and every day to my students. I taught nonstop, but in my spare time, I was building relationships and recruiting the high schools and industry. Those 12 students have grown to 150 in just three years. <laughs> Teaching is like welding. 
You can take rough and broken materials and join them back together again and make them stronger and more beautiful than they were before. I can't think of a more noble way to serve my community than as a welding instructor for the Technical College System of Georgia. I just wanted to add to that that I'm a product of TCSG and Wiregrass. Unwilling product, I guess. I, I had no idea I was going to do this. It wasn't what I thought I'd do with my life. But what I see now is I see high schoolers, three of them last year, six of them this year, who will qualify for an associate's degree in technical studies before they even get their high school diploma. What you do and what we do matters. There's a bunch of kids in rural Douglas, Coffee County right now who need us. They need us to show them the love. They need us to show them the way. They need us to build them up, provide motivation, direction, and purpose so they can go out and fill these fields, these trades. I could be cliche right now, and I can tell you that someone built this. It was a tradesman. It was an HVAC. It was an electrician. It was a welder. It was a contractor. It was a carpenter. IT guys doing all these great things where we're up on the screens. I could tell you that that's what they do. But what I'm going to tell you really means something from a tradesman is that they can afford a car to go home. They can afford to build a house for themselves. They can afford to feed their family. And I, me, a welder, a tradesman, have put four kids through college on this pay. I thank you for this opportunity. And what you do matters. Thank you.